but you know um some people may not necessarily want to um ask those questions in light of it but um there's always people who can't make it in the last minute so right so first things first i'm just waiting for this recording to kick in and then once i get the ping we'll go for it the other thing on housekeeping i am more than up for people asking questions as we go so i'm not one of these who goes oh leave all your questions to the end it's like no no let's do it as we go because it'll make sense for other people so if you want to ask questions absolutely fine but the one thing i would just ask is if you're not asking a question can you mute because google has this weird thing where sometimes it flips to the presenter so you could be like i don't know blowing your nose or something and suddenly in the middle of my presentation you pop up blowing your nose so um uh we'll just kick start this and i just want to kind of start this by showing you something first and then i'll explain why i've showed it as we go so this is kind of slightly illogical the way i'm going to do it but here we go so i'm sharing my screen so uh, here we go so what i want to show you is and this will make sense i don't know why my excel's flickering like that but uh, this will make sense in a minute um, because um, what I want to do is show you three different ways that people are generating leads from social media. I'm, I'm going to park ads for a minute and I'm just going to show you this because this is um, the stats. Now, um, the, you'll hear all sorts of stats, but I'm going to show you the real versions, right? You'll hear, oh, how somebody closed 20 new clients in the next six weeks in 30 days and uh, how uh, uh, I'm going to watch your faces for a minute. Has anybody had the I can get you to six figure months in 30 days pitch yet? Anybody had that one? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to show my age. I'm going to show my age as a grumpy old man, right, for a minute. And hopefully the younger 20 somethings on here won't get won't get insulted by this. Most of the people who are saying I can get you to 100k months in 60 days or 30 days don't look like they've been out of school very long now whether that's just me being an old grumpy old man and not understanding stuff or whether it's just the way the world is i don't know but there's a lot of people doing it so i want to show you the cult, the, the maths first of all and then i want to help you understand why the 10 leads and how it works so you don't need ads for this there's no secret system i'm just going to show you human common sense right uh, i can't spell here right so what i did earlier today there's a website of um a lead generation agency that do cold outreach messages and emails so i they publish their stats so i decided i'd use their stats they're the experts in cold outreach i'd use their stats for this um I'm not going to publish it in the video because I don't want it to perceive that I'm critiquing them, but this is their website. So, so in 2022 March, we'll discount April because it was Easter. In March 2022, they sent, they hit, targeted 444,000 prospects, sent 1.6 million emails, so roughly 3.6 emails per person, uh, and. The result was 14,000 leads. So 3.32% activity to lead ratio. Yeah, just remember that in your mind. So what I've done is I've put this in and go, how do we get, how do we get 10 leads a week with that process? Yeah. So I'm, don't get bored with me here. I will, I will get to a point in a minute. Right. So if you look at that you have to hit up 336,000 people sorry 336 people every single week right if you want 10 leads this week you have to hit up 336 people if you want 10 leads next week you have to hit up 336 people every single week but what i'll also show you yeah is that the cost per lead on this is not getting better. Yeah, this is their stats, not mine. The cost per lead is not getting better doing that their activity. Why is that? That's not them, by the way. That's because everybody, and it, one man and his dog, 
is hitting people up. And what happens is if you think about LinkedIn, maybe what, three, four years ago, less people were doing the DM pitching thing. And so it was more effective because there was less of them. But now it's so crowded. It's so busy. Emails, ads, so busy that um, the mass work doesn't work. You have to do more to get the same or more to even get less. So cold outreach ultimately is getting saturated. And so the market of cold outreach where there was skill, uh, so no skill cold outreach, shall we say, where you could just send messages and it could be anything. You could say, hi, how are you? And you get replies. The skill is going to have to come back in that. So the market has gone very easy, very commoditized. Here's some templates, send the templates. Now that so many people are doing it, the templates don't work as well. The gimmicks don't work as well. And so now the skill has to come back into that cold outreach. But we're not here to talk about cold outreach, but I want to just highlight the numbers here because I'm going to show you the content piece, yeah, which is different. So the content piece, which I call the intent threshold version, is slightly different. And I'll show you how this works in a minute. And I'll show you a real brief way to do it. So intent thresholds and content is about putting content out that provokes your audience. You don't need a big crowd because the conversions are a lot better. So I'm doing this at the moment with a group of people where we're building this together. And what we're finding is that actually that you can get about 25% con uh, conversion from content to lead. Now, I'll show you how that works in a minute. Now, by lead, this is what I mean. I mean that they have told you they need you. So not I've, I've asked them, do they need help? And they say yes. They've told me. And we can do content in a couple of different ways to get people to tell you that they need you. And that's what an intent threshold is. So the lead I've put in here that if you get a lead where they wave their hand and say, hey, I need what you've got, that 40% of them, so of those 25, just 10 of them will actually talk to you. They get busy, they forget, you know, the email gets lost or whatever that you send to follow up them when they say they're interested. 10 of them say they're interested. Yeah, 10. And then of those 10 who actually remember and see the email and reply and, you know, don't forget, five of them will actually talk to you. Which means of them, I'm assuming that half of them, and I've assumed this in all of them, that half of them, right, will actually convert because they've told you they need you. You've gone through that process. You've followed them. So you wave the hand and say they need you. Dead simple, right? Would anybody disagree with that kind of thought process? Anybody? Feel free to, by the way. No? So, so I've looked at that and go, well, if you want, if you want 10 leads per week that are interested, actually, I've got it to 25 here, but let's cut this down and say it was 10, right? You actually only need to interact with maybe 100 people. So let me show you how we interact with 100 people. So first things first, right? And I'm just going to compare this against cold outreach. So let me just bin that spreadsheet for a minute. If I look in my inbox, right? And hopefully I won't, right? A lot of them, our sales pitches, right? So if I look at this and how many of you have had a sales pitch from somebody that's totally irrelevant? Yeah, all the time. I got in trouble because I suggested doing something a bit rude, uh, a bit nasty on my LinkedIn feed to people who send me irrelevant pitches. And my, my followers firmly told me off the other day. Um, but what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, um, what they're trying to do, and I'll, uh, this will make sense for the content. What they're trying to do is if they send so many messages, they're bound to find somebody who's interested. Yeah. If I buy 14 million lottery tickets, I'm going to win, aren't I? Yeah, I'm going to win something. Yeah. And so the theory behind the current way cold outreach, just the current way, not cold outreach as a principle, but the way it's being used right now is if I send enough, I'll get something. What I'm going to talk to you about with content is instead of going for numbers, 
go for the people who are ready to find use the content to find the people who are ready to buy yeah so what you do is you create content that attracts the people who need what you sell so if i look through linkedin at the moment and i look at this and go how many people how many people are actually <laughs> i like that one i've never seen that one um how many people are actually posting content that that does the pre-qualification or part of the pre-qualification pre for you and as we look through our feed, feeds very little of it can we see that is actually getting our attention and showing us hey i need what you sell very few of it is doing that most of it is hey look how amazing i am yeah look at how wonderful our stuff is yeah Annette, brilliant, give value in your content. But what we're looking to do is use content to agitate people who have a need. In other words, you can't sell to anybody, you can't get a lead unless somebody needs help. Yeah, in some way, shape or form, they have to be dissatisfied by the way they're doing things right now. And they have to want something better. Real simple. So if our content is put out starts to speak to those people in need and i'm going to give an example in a minute and maybe if we've got a willing uh i was going to say a willing victim but a, a, a willing volunteer i will use their uh their service and i will show you how i'll create content very quickly in like five minutes that will get their attention erin did i say that right Cool. Erin, tell me about what you do. And guys, watch this because it's going to be me doing it for Erin. So I'll be doing it as if I'm her so you can copy what I'm doing. Um, so I work with a company which is SaaS. So it's called What Converts, W-H-A-T-C-O-N-V-E-R-T-S. Okay. And so we essentially do lead tracking. Right. So it's it's understanding where your leads are coming from, who they are, following up with them, um, and providing actual information that com companies can follow up with to bring clients in um, and so part of what i wanted to do was to create more content on my linkedin profile in order to engage with cool. the right kinds of people which is why i'm here <laughs> okay so what i'm going to do is i am going to uh this is a document i'll happily share it with you erin afterwards and anybody else who wants it so i'm just going to put it in here and go what was it called read convert what converts? What converts? I've just made a new name. You've rebranded already. Right. What converts? So, what converts? Here we go. What I want you to tell me quickly oh, is, and um, we won't get this, we won't get this right first time. But what I want you to do is tell me exactly, and I'm, then I'm going to give you some actions of what you need to do with this content. So, um, tell me ex what are some of the things that you would do right now what would be the big win for a business if they employ employed your software um they would be able to get the exact person's contact details who was visiting their website and putting in a query at a clickable point so a lot of the softwares give you like a general this company yeah. reached out whereas we can say all right bob at this location with this email address yeah came okay. to visit. So you can see exactly who the human being was that looked yes. at your, right. So you can see the exact person's contact details. So that will allow you to follow up more accurately. And we also can give you the keyword search that they used. So that really helps um, with marketing avenues. Oh, I'm just going to pick on those three for now, just because sure. I think they're easy ones that everybody here will grab. So what this means right now is exactly what you said. At the moment, they get leads, but can't see who exactly they are. Hmm. Yeah. But also the big pain at the moment is they don't know who to follow up with. So if, if KPMG come to my website 
I'm like, well, where, where do I start, right? If it's a small business, I can take a guess. But honestly, yeah. yeah. So um, then we go, okay, right? So let me just get rid of my arrow so I'll make it nice and tidy. <laughs> so uh, then they can go, focus your marketing on the keywords that bring the right decision makers. Yeah, does everybody follow what I've just done there, right? So now what we're going to do is, and I'm just trying to explain what this is. This is what we call an AVP. So for anybody who comes onto our programs, we have to make one of these because this is the way you get leads is when you start speaking. So if they can get the exact contact person's details, what does that mean to their business? Well, they can actually follow up with them in terms of bringing in a sale. So, you know, if it's e-commerce or insurance or anything like that, they can actually physically follow up with the person and say, oh, we see you looked at this or perhaps we can talk to you more. So it just gives you a more direct contact with customers. So, so they could, they're going to convert more leads because they'll know who they are. They'll be able to follow up. Uh, get on the pro proactively follow up the leads um, so they could convert more traffic and then um, get more high quality leads Yeah, so you see what I've done there? I've taken that almost benefit of your service and taken it into a business outcome. Yeah. So now I'm going to go to the other side here and I'll tell you why this works in a minute. So at the moment, they're able to, with the results of this service, they'll be able to convert more of the leads. So if they've got a problem right now, it's they uh, can't convert leads yeah stroke struggling to convert traffic yeah um, they convert more traffic into sales so not able to follow up on web traffic at all maybe i'm doing this really quick and ads and seo bringing or results so if i wanted to now present a post that would get my audience's attention the first one i'd be talking about is these boxes here these boxes here get the attention and these boxes here are actually the substance so if i want to create a con piece of content now i can pick some boxes and i'm going to pick those three boxes bring them down here and I'm going to be write a post real simple and I can just literally go and write a post and there's a structure to the post of hook hook teaser teaser substance and not every post has to have a call to action some of them can just be interesting and and uh, like uh, value content, right? And I'm just going to use these three boxes to write a post. So, so I'm going to go you've got lead tracking, but you have no idea who the person was. Um, my spelling's not very good. So uh, everybody watch this because I'm going to build a post in real time and I might even be brave enough to put it up. Maybe some big brands are looking at your site. You can see they looked, but you just can't. Uh, let's look somebody in.
figure out who it was. So teaser is then you just draw them in a bit more. Let me explain how you can find the decision maker. Actually, not that hard. You can get in a real report instead of stalking the company on LinkedIn. And now I would write the substance of the post and I would explain how it works. Now, the hooks are what gets people to stop scrolling. The teasers are what get people to stay. And then the substance is where you explain. And you'll notice on the side here, I've got teach, action, solve pain, testimonials, and you, experience you. The idea is that you could take these three boxes and in post one, you explain how you help people, how to find the decision maker. Yeah, how your software finds the decision maker. And point two is actions, how to follow up so somebody who's been on your website and some of the best practice actionable things that you can do anybody resonating with these issues think about it if the if you start talking about these points and you people pay attention they're speaking based on the need they've got yeah so if i go if i posted on linkedin and said does anybody need red cars Anybody got a chipped red car? And I did that every time. Guess what would happen? The only people who pay attention to me are people who have an interest in red cars. So where the problem comes is what most people do on social media is they think that their prospects are thinking like this. Your prospects are actually sat thinking like this, going, how do we find out who that decision maker is? Yeah. Or how do we, why are our ads not getting the wrong traffic? Or how, why can't we follow up on the web traffic? Why, why are we getting all this traffic? Why can't we follow up on it? They're not thinking, oh, that our sales team don't know how to follow up, who to follow up with. So it's not a logical argument. It's a motive. It's like, why can't we follow up all these people? We get big companies looking at our website uh, and we don't do anything with them. Yeah. So we speak to their emotive angle and then this is the logical bit in the middle. Yeah. So these are like the exact results. So is anybody a coach on here? Right. Anybody? Right. So let's say for an example, and Annette and Claire, I haven't looked at your headlines, so I'm not picking on you. Although Claire, thank you for telling me off earlier this week. Um, um, I'm not looking at your headlines, but one of the things I see a lot is coaches saying i help you overcome um self-sabotage or mindset issues or um emotional eating but most of the people that you can serve don't understand that that's actually their problem yeah most of them understand that there's something wrong annette yeah Right. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now, I actually make it quite clear that I help uh, women who've been bullied in the workplace. I have yeah. my own story of this. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, what I find is that people do not particularly want to come forward and certainly no. not LinkedIn. And yeah. I can understand that because I think when I was bullied, I felt like I had to hide away and walk the walk of shame. Mm -hmm. So I, I can understand that. Yeah. So so and uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Erin, in a second. But Annette, you're in an interesting position because when it becomes personal, mm -hmm. people will not want to admit that publicly. Mm -hmm. So I have this little joke. Um, hopefully it won't um, offend anybody. 
um, where how many people, if I did a webinar on erectile dysfunction, how many people do you think would come? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not oh many, God. because it's a highly personal thing, and we don't want to put ourselves in front of pe other people or acknowledge that to other people we don't know. Mm -hmm. So, Annette, your challenge will be um, when you put content out, mm -hmm. some people will watch it, but they won't want to engage with it. Yes, I think that, I think that, yeah, that I, I, that's what I do experience. Yeah. So, so what we do is we have two levels of content. We have the content that gets seen. Mm -hmm. Some of it will people will engage with, but not everything. And mm -hmm. then we have a level above, which is things where people can anonymously uh, access it. So, uh, for an example, uh, uh, not to the public. Yeah. So they're not signaling mm -hmm. to their coworkers. Could you imagine if somebody liked your post and then their boss saw the like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. This is, uh, yeah, yeah. So what we can do is we can create content that gives the value, the C bit, and get them to see mm -hmm. what we do and how we help. Mm -hmm. But then we can create intent thresholds where if people are really hurt by this, are really wounded by this, mm -hmm. they can privately tell us or they can signal to us in a way where they what? can join. Like with an email list or? Email list or a, a PDF or mm -hmm. you'll notice I do two types of webinars or two types of events. I do events like this where you can all interact mm -hmm. and then I do events where it's you watch on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did, I did a masterclass on gaslighting uh, a few weeks ago and I had 16 people attend. So that was quite well attended um, yeah. because so, I talked about it, how to spot it and uh, you know, what mm -hmm. you can do about it. But the key thing, and was, I had some very positive feedback from it. But the key thing here, and I'll come back to Erin for a minute is, mm -hmm. Uh, what we're trying to do is use the content to get their attention. Mm -hmm. And then we use the intent threshold to get their intent. Mm -hmm. And so I've ju I'll just give you some very simple ways to do this. Obviously, mm -hmm. this is this is a whole piece. Well, of I'm, going, I'm going to write this down. OK, so mm -hmm. I'm going to show you some simple ways to do this. Yeah. What I'll say to you very is easy to see on, on my screen. I'll, I'll zoom in. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm going to show you some simple That's ways better. to do it. Mm -hmm. um, the key to this for everybody here, whatever you're selling, whatever you're promoting, is it's not the mechanism you use so much as it's the message that gets their attention. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. Um, let's say I've done this for an example here, and I'm going to write a PDF, and it's going to be called Five Ways or the ultimate way to convert your website mm -hmm. visitors. Okay. Now, I don't actually have a website at the moment. I so. don't Annette, would you mind turning your mic off? I'm having a hard time following the presentation with the, the vocalizations. So, Annette, I'll, I'll, this will all make sense because I'm doing this on Erin. So if you can just mute and then we'll do some questions again in a second sure yeah so if you look here they don't know who to follow up with they can't get they're struggling to convert leads and they want to convert more traffic so the ultimate way to convert your website visitors into clients oh this sounds great this one how does that sound erin right it now, makes total sense when you say it like that <laughs> right <laughs> so the message is everything right one sentence one sentence could make you all of your clients and leads for the next year one sentence but what we do is we focus on getting stuff out getting stuff out getting stuff out and we don't figure figure out the sentence and the message that will get people now here's here's the thing if somebody looks at that title right they and they're interested what they're interested in they're interested in converting people from their website into clients and we've told them it's the ultimate way so erin could do one of two things number well she could do three things number one she could offer this as a lead magnet 
click through and download on her, on her posts. That's one way. Number two, Lerin, uh, Lerin, Erin does a LinkedIn event and explains this, how they do this, not as a demo. Yeah, it's training. And you say, here's ways you can do it. Number one, you can put lead magnets in. Number two, you could put uh, feedback forms. Number three, you could track them. So give people alternatives. Yeah. So then people go, well, hang on a minute. Um, this is how you could do it, right? So I could create a, a LinkedIn event and invite my network to it. And guess what? If they come, what are they interested in? Then I could do a PDF download that I could put in my feed that people could download. And I could share it once or twice a week, once a week, maybe. Yeah. Or, or could do this one. Let me just pull it up. Uh, so I could do this one here, and I'm just going to do a thank you message on LinkedIn. So I connect with people on LinkedIn. I'll just see if I've got one here a new connection and i'm going to share um a lead magnet uh just bear with me and i'll show you exactly what happens so i'm doing quite a lot in one short piece of time here so apologies if it's um i'll just view here oh uh, melanie smith i'll pick on melanie smith here and uh, thanks for connecting. Okay. Hope all is good with you. Best the latest resource. So I'm not pitching them. I'm just going to send them a thank you message with a resource. What makes them click? Title. It's just the title. Now, if you fail to deliver on that promise, on that content, it'll be like, oh, um, I got one the other day. How to grow your business, how to make more money in your business. Point one was get more customers. Thanks for that. Point two, charge more. Point three, reduce your costs. It's like, oh, piss off. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I know some people don't like swearing, but it was like, really? But it's the one word that does it. They, they download it. They access it. They come to the event. Guess what we do? We thank them for coming for the event and ask them, would they like to know more about how we do it, how we help them? Real low key, you don't need to push them. If you're a bit more salesy, you can push them. But if you don't want to do that, you can just say, would you like to know more? Would you like some more resources? Would you like to know how we can help you implement this? The people who don't engage, right? And I'll just come back to my spreadsheet for a minute, right? If I can get it up on screen. Right, and I'll just show you this example. The people who don't engage. So we've come back to this spreadsheet here, right? And of those 10 that have engaged, what's happened with the 336? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, Deborah, I'll answer your question in a second. These 336 have become, 326 of them were a waste. Absolute waste. Yeah. Of the 10, they'll, salespeople will probably follow them up. Have I done anything to annoy that person by just doing that? Nothing. If they ignore it, I'm not going to follow up. I'm just going to leave them alone because my, they're in my connections. They're seeing my content. I'm, I'm helping them and, and giving them value in the feed. So my feed 
is full of content that's also speaking to these needs, giving value, sharing a bit about me, sharing some lighthearted stuff, mixing it up. But actually, I'm not upsetting anybody. I'm not annoying. I'm not pestering anybody. So what happens is I'm pulling out on this one. If I did 20 thank you messages a day, yeah, just thank you message. I'm not counting the content or an event. We've just had a client who's gone through our 100 leads program. They put 250 people on an event. Will they all show up? No, but 25, 30% of them will show up. He only needs five clients. Yeah, but he's educated an audience, connections. They've opted in to say, oh, I'm interested. So they're the ones he's going to work and to try and foster and develop with whilst everybody else is being nurtured. And because everybody else is being nurtured, this stuff starts to kick in. The inbound. Now, the inbound doesn't happen immediately. This is something you have to work at. But if you look at the numbers here, if you can get to a point where you're getting one inbound, and I would say it would take you three to six months to get to an inbound a week, yeah? Or an inbound a day, yeah? Six months, yeah? If you're doing this stuff here, right? You actually end up where you're picking up business without doing anything. I don't know whether you've seen a... Um, um, uh, a podcast I recently did with the uh, enterprise account manager for Hootsuite. And he's focused all on content, getting the content out there to get his enterprise accounts. Um, because that's how you build the trust and the credibility so that when people engage with you, they go, it's a much easier battle than trying to go through this process. So I put my content out. I'm doing this thank you message here, uh, dead simple. I'm putting out my posts, giving the value as well, and getting people to engage with the content in various different ways. So you can see I've got this lead magnet here. Yeah, and the other thing that's advantageous for you is that lead magnet that you're putting out is actually building, um, it's actually building a list. So Erin, from your point of view, you would be accumulating 10, 15, 20 people in your own follow-up list I know you're probably maybe a bit more direct on the sales side, but you would have a follow-up list that's bigger than it would just get progressively bigger. So if you wanted to do some follow-up in the future, you could ask them how they're getting on with it. If they're using lead forensics, how's that working for them? You know, all that stuff. So you've got a list of your own. For some of you who are small business, perhaps solopreneurs, you've got a marketing list that you can share value with to keep you top of feed. So it's not just a case of, oh, I've got somebody who's bitten and I've made a sale. You're actually building a pipeline of people, a fan base of people you can engage and bring to stuff. And they they trust you, they, they engage with you. And so it works really well. So coming back to that post, if we did this lead magnet, yeah, it's all about the message. And remember, for most of us, our customers are focused on these symptoms and real world impact. Yeah. So I could equally, if I look here, right, and I see these here, and I go, okay, what other solutions could I fix where I want to get more leads or struggling to convert traffic? Right. I'm not going to say this, but I could do. Might not be as effective as your option, but actually when I start to speak to people at point A and point B, I can actually appeal to people who are just looking for a result or living with a pain rather than going, hey, are you using those people and can't get this? Yeah, I can actually appeal to people and go, I can show you who, which decision makers have been on your website. Yeah. And so suddenly, if you think about it from Erin's point of view, this also works with direct message. And I wouldn't actually suggest doing it, but you can do it. Erin, you could do a little message to people and say, you know, I'm sure you can find out who's got what tracking on what website. You could go to people and say, hey, I spotted you're using this. But would you like to know exactly who the decision makers are? So this audience value proposition 
unlocks these messages that helps you with DMs, helps you with webinars, helps you with lead magnets, helps you with content. It does everything for you because what it does is says symptoms and real world impact is what people are gonna get their attention on. The big pains and big wins are the things that are the immediate things that happen. And Erin, hopefully you, you don't fall out even for this, but the only reason, the only reason people want what converts is for these things. Yeah. No decision maker goes, actually, yeah, we want what converts so we can find out exactly who the decision maker is just for reference. They're not doing it for reference, are they? They're doing it because we want to convert them. We want to follow up. I want my salespeople to, to get on them. I want deals. Yeah. They don't go, okay, I'm going to, I want to, I want to follow up more accurately because we'd like to, them to complete a customer service survey. It's like, no, we want to convert. Yeah. So when we understand the pains and the goals or the real world impact they want, actually, that's the bit that gets us the hooks. This is the hooks. And if we do these right, when people wave their hands, they're waving their hands because they have a need. And if I just show you on LinkedIn, right, we'll just do this experiment. Uh, let's pick on events. I'm going to try. Uh, let me find an event. Let me find, scroll down somewhere here. They will show me some events to look for. Maybe not. Thanks for that, LinkedIn. Right. I'm just going to go. I'm going to put marketing in and I'm going to search for events. And we're going to do a little poll, a little survey. Right. Um, if we look through these, right, you'll find that the webinars that have got the most attendees right the events that have got the most attendees are the ones where it's very clear what they're going to get the real world impact the ones that are not very well attended let's go back down to page 8 yeah are the ones where it's not very clear Now, some of these will be big events, yeah, but you, the ones that don't get the big attendees are the ones where it's not clear how they fix it. They want an outcome. They want a result. So the, the, this bit, this whole exercise helps you create content, helps you create lead magnets, helps you create events, everything you need to attract the people who are currently living with a pain that they're getting sick of or they want to get to a goal and when we look back at my boring spreadsheet what are we doing here we're trying to find the people who have a need right now so the question is do we burn through people trying to find them or do we set ourselves up with a huge freaking magnet of we're going to dangle exactly what they want because we know our service can do it and we're going to dangle the messaging and give value and talk to it and offer it and engage with it. Why? So that those people pay attention to us, listen to us and want to know more. Real simple, right? Common sense. So the daily habits you have to follow. Number one, post content. Number two, grow your network with the exact target market. You don't need to pitch them. Get your lead magnet with your thank you message ready and do your thank you messages. On that, when you're sending a connection request, you know, obviously once you're connected, you can send yeah. that connection request. Would you use anything with the initial connection request? So depending on the, I mean, there'll be lots of people here with lots of different uh, size of businesses. So let me just, um, I'm going to pull up another slide. Um, and I'll show you this because it will be helpful. This is our full training, but I'm just going to show you this. 
So this is what we teach for salespeople, but I'm, I'm gonna focus in on these four first four steps here. So the first four steps here are interact with their profile beforehand twice and not on the same day. Then send a connection request with a personal message. Then send your thank you message. That will keep your acceptance rate above 50%. And on LinkedIn, it has to be above 50% if you want to avoid a restriction. Does that make sense, Erin? The other thing I'm going to show you quickly, and I know I'm kind of throwing a load of stuff out here, is breadcrumbs. Yeah. So breadcrumbs are making sure that you're engaging with prospects that are actually on the platform. So I'll show you who wants to be a volunteer for this. Anybody? Deborah. Deborah, I haven't answered your question. I'll come back to you in a moment. No worries. So I'm going to look at Deborah. And hopefully she won't fall out with me for this. Um, is, is uh, that you? No, that's scary. That's what's cool. your what's your organization name? Myco M Y C O. Oh, I'm on events. Sorry. Oh dear. Oh. oh. Well, this speaks volumes. I think you need to join our LinkedIn train. <laughs> um, That's an old account. How weird. Well, I tried to connect with you this week, so if that helps. Oh, let me have a look. There, there you I go. am. Ah, yeah. there you go. Deb. Ah. Uh, so let me have a look. Right. So breadcrumbs are really important for understanding which are the po prospects who are here because there's not. Where have you gone? There you are. Right. So I'm going to do look at uh, no in no Lusha for a minute. I'm going to look at Deb's uh, breadcrumbs. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at Deb's activity, and I can see she's liked somebody's comment on that post 11 hours ago. Yeah, in the last 11 hours. Right. So I can see where Deb is active and where she isn't. So I can see that she's engaging with people. She's interacting with people. Is Deb a good prospect to be connecting with? The hint, yes. Why? Because she's here and she's active on the platform. If I connect with somebody who, because they're the right person, but they haven't done any activity in three months in the activity stage, they're not there. So inadvertently, you could fill up your LinkedIn with zombie accounts and go, why is nobody engaging with me? Because nobody's there. But then I look at Deb's posts and I can see she posted a day ago. She posted two days ago, four days ago. So as a prospect, if I want to do business with Deb, she's here. She's showing up. There's no point me trying to reach the CEO of somewhere that hasn't logged in. And I'm not talking about just posting. I'm looking at how often Deb's engaging. I'm looking for the breadcrumbs. Yeah. So I'm looking for the people who are the most engaged so that when I connect, I know I've got a chance of, of an opportunity, whether it be now or in six months time, whether Deb responds to my thank you lead magnet. It doesn't. That's what I'm looking for. So the key here is number one, make sure you've got the breadcrumbs. The seven steps is something we teach as part of our social selling. So it's kind of more on the sales side, but step one, interaction one, interaction two, connection request, thank you message is where you would do your lead magnet. If you, LinkedIn allows you to grow your connections by up to 100 per week. Yeah. If you did that, yeah, off, off the numbers I've collected, you'd be getting 25 a week. But let's say you're really bad at it to be to begin with, you're going to get 12 10 a week comfortably just from doing that if you're then posting talking about these issues you're going to add to that and if you put your lead magnet or your web webinar or your event out there you're going to get more again yeah 
two or three maybe, one maybe. But the long-term play for you, the long-term play for you is actually you're growing your network with the right people. You're speaking to them about the pains you know you can fix. And then at some point within three, it depends how quickly you get the AVP bit because that's the tricky bit. It's not the actions that's hard. It's the message that's tricky. Once you've got that bit, you can actually go, well, hang on a minute. I'm now getting inbound. But the inbound is, I would say for most people, consistent inbound is three to six months away. So this middle road here is quit doing this stuff. Yeah, I know, Erin, you might have to do it for your job. But if you can, you could quit doing this stuff, uh, quit doing this stuff, start doing this stuff whilst you're building this, which is where, you know, six six months down the road, you could be in that place. I had a conversation with a client today who's uh, struggling on a proposal. So I helped them look at through the proposal. And then he suddenly realized that the person he's got the proposal from actually inquired on his website, but has been engaging with his post for the last couple of months on LinkedIn. Yeah. And he was like, how did this web proposal come in? Because it came via LinkedIn, but it came on the website. So this is the key here. So, so what unlocks all of this is obviously the thank you message. You need one PDF. You need one PDF and one event. And that would serve you well for the next six to 12 months. One PDF and one event. And that will get you more than your 10 leads a week. Yeah. One event with the right title, the right topic, the right message will get you 200 in one go. But let's say half of them are a waste of time, 100. Yeah. And there's always going to be that, by the way. You can't eliminate the wrong people clicking. Yeah. I'd love to be able to do it. You can't. All you can do is do your bit to make sure you get the right people clicking. Any questions? Oh, I did have one from Deb, didn't I? Jim, I uh, I send a replay with a link to this session and I'll have a smart link to the AVP on there so you can get that. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, this is my shameless plug, is on the 26th of May, I'm running for eight weeks where we build your AVP with you and implement all of this together. So not maybe a group as, uh, maybe a group about this size. And we literally go, here's your AVP. Let's do the work together. Let's write them together. Let's do it. Implement it. Done. Launch. Let's get those leads coming in. Uh, but we're going to do 100 leads in six weeks. So two weeks of training and then 100 leads in six weeks. And if you're one of these who loves to train and train and learn and learn and learn, but never actually do, I'm going to kick your butt. Yeah. Um, so um, somebody's just asked a question about LinkedIn groups, so I'll, I'll answer that one. And then Claire, Claire's raised a hand, so I don't know whether Claire's raised a hand or it's the same one. Um, LinkedIn groups. Um, LinkedIn groups are, are okay. Um, LinkedIn's imposed a restriction on messaging, but you've still got to get the message read. So yes, LinkedIn groups are okay. Um, I've used them a little bit but they're not very active. So you end up where actually sales navigators, your biggest, oh, can we do a little trick by the way? Can we do a little trick just before we finish? I know everybody's like, oh, it's three o'clock, four o'clock, I run, but right. I'm just gonna put in the chat a link. This this is something else we do inside the um, uh, 100 lead program. Go have a, uh, no, sorry, I put the wrong link. I put the wrong link, hang fire. Hate it when copy and paste doesn't work very well. I'm going to put a link into the. I'm going to put a link into the chat. Go look at that link. Now, this is a feature of LinkedIn. Some of you will know about it, but most people don't know how to use it. In fact, one of the funny things about LinkedIn is when we did our, our smart link training, LinkedIn actually borrowed it because they'd never seen it being used the way we use it. 
So go have a look at that link. Uh, it's the bottom one, the LinkedIn.com one. Now, everybody knows, most people will know about smart links. But what they won't know is that LinkedIn allows you to track who's viewing your content. So I can go on here and go, okay, Vernon's looked and Sophie's looked, but when it gets later, it actually tells me how long people have looked. And so I can understand, are the right people looking? I could share a smart link, but the smart link has to be the right message because if I use the wrong message, people won't look. If I don't do it in the right way, people won't pay attention. So we do all of these things, but the idea is you need to get to the end. The way I classify a lead is it's the right decision maker. It, they've got the need. Yeah. And they're in the, you know, they're in the budget or the ability to pay. There's no point if your service is a million pounds. I'm not saying it is, but if it's a million pounds and you get somebody who's an entry level worker, a retailer do, looking at your lead magnet, that's not a lead because it will never turn to a sale unless they're like secret millionaire or something. So you've got to get the right people with the right need and the ability or budget or decision making power to actually commit to your service and buy. That's what I see as a lead. And so our AVP, our message has to speak to them about the things that they're concerned about so that they see why they need this stuff. And that's why we do it the way we do. So hook, hook, teaser, teaser, substance. Yeah. And it plays to the rule of the 10 second rule on LinkedIn, which is you've got to get people to stay for 10 seconds on your posts. If you don't do that, you you are invisible. 10 second rule. So if you want to know more about the 100 leads, I'll happily send you with the replay. I'll send you a link. Go check it out. My ugly mush is on it somewhere. Um, it's eight weeks long. Uh, it's a bit intense. You'd probably need two hours a week to devote to it, plus the group coaching stuff. But the, the idea is I drag you kicking and streaming through this AVP and into implementation. So really, if you can go do this yourself, go do this yourself. If you go, mm, I can do this myself, but I know I'll put it off or not do it. That's the reason to sign up. Any questions? Not about the 100 leads, about anything. Smart marketing, yeah? Um, yeah, following up on the question I asked about the LinkedIn groups. So if yeah. groups are not a great, numbers of us will have a, a network that we have yeah. and then the network that we want. Yeah. So is it the direct messaging you were talking about that you used to get from A to B? I mean post and hope that you can get there what what strategies do you use for post for, for outreach well, well for, for, for getting so so you have a product you have a service you identify the kind of people that you want yeah uh, likely to consume it but they may not be in your network at the moment yeah right so you've got to build that network or get that network yeah so so that's where the pdf would come in so the pdf would be you'd you'd um um Matthew, I'll come to your question in a second. So if I was doing it with, um, the, they weren't in my network, I'd go to Sales Navigator and try and tightly identify who they were, number one. Then I would be, find the most active on the platform by filtering on Sales Navigator. So on Sales Nav, uh, for anybody who's not familiar, you can filter by who's been active in terms of posting or activity on the platform in the last 30 days. So I'll just show you here for an example on Sales Navigator. So if I go down here, uh, the, 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 the recent activities. Oh, hang on, I'm on, com I'm on companies. Let me just flick to people, sorry. So on Sales Navigator, I can track and find not only the right decision makers, but I can actually find the people who are uh, who've changed jobs in the last 90 days and who've posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. And on this list, it will give me, uh, I've not filtered it, 14,000 people. The seconds in that network would be my first target. LinkedIn says, by the rules, do not connect cold to people. But I would 
do my seven steps, steps one to four, like and comment on their posts, like and comment and send a connection request, thank them for connecting. Um, that's what I do on that piece. With my existing connections, so Matthew, what I would do is host something like this, or maybe a YouTube version, something that's less personal, depending on what you do. Create the LinkedIn event, there's, and I would invite those people over a period of four to five weeks to your event. And the title will qualify people. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry, I was going to ask there, Dean. Yeah. So, yeah, so invite the people. There's six and a half thousand people. I, I, how? I, I'm not quite sure. You mean screen all the connections? Yeah. Well, LinkedIn will allow you. LinkedIn will allow you on a LinkedIn event to actually invite up to a thousand people per week. Right. So, if you set up an event in four weeks' time, LinkedIn will let you invite up to a thousand of your connections every week. So, Matthew, your first thought process is I'm not going through six and a half thousand people to find the right people, right? Don't just invite people because as long as you know you've got the right people in your audience, they will opt in or opt out because they'll say, oh, I'll come then. Thanks. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, if there's key people in there, you want to make sure the key people that you think I'd love to work with those people, you'd invite them specifically. But if you've got two and a half thousand people who fit your criteria in your LinkedIn, you're not going to troll through every one. You're going to go, I'll make sure I'll invite as many of my network as I can and I'll focus on the industries that I want. I'm not going to invite uh, um, IT companies if I'm not selling to IT companies. Jeff, what's the most effective connection request? Yeah, I'll show right. you, I'll show you one, and I'm going to do it. Um, Jeff, are we connected? I believe we are. Yes. Uh, who's not connected to me and doesn't mind me sending them a connection request? Erin, are we connected? I have sent through a uh, request to you. I think I saw it on your page. Oh, yeah. somebody, somebody uh, who's not connected. Who's who we not connected to? I want to do this quick. Um, so I'll tell you, Jeff, because I haven't got a volunteer. Okay. If I've commented on, if I've commented on this post, yeah, of Stephen McGoffs, I know him, and I mm -hmm. comment. My best connection request is. Um, I thought your point on that post was really good. Are you happy to connect? Perfect. Just simple. Yeah, dead simple. Yeah. And that, then what allows you to send a PDF the next time? Like it's when just, they accept, when they accept, I go, thanks for requesting, uh, accepting Steve. Hope all's good with you guys or you guys at wherever. Beth, right. Dean, here's my latest resource and put it underneath. Brilliant. Like a signature. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Look, I've got to run to my next thing. We'll get you a replay. If you want to join the 100 leads, we'll send you a link. There's no pressure to do so. If you've got questions about what we've talked about today, we'll by all means happily um, uh, help out and support you where we can. So ask questions. My goal is that you guys will go away from here. Obviously, I want some of you to become customers. That's great. But some of you are going to go away from here and say, those Maverick guys, they're really helpful. And that's, again, a good piece for us. So thank you for joining me. We'll get the replays out to you. And um, we're going to do more of these. So if you want to come and jump on some other stuff that we're doing, by all means, and feel free to connect with me. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Much. Excellent.